In this video, we will show you how to replace a laser tube, as well as how to independently check and understand that it is time to change the tube. Hello, this is Verma. Sign up so you don't miss useful videos. Let's get started. Replacing a laser tube. On a machine that is already in operation, the laser tube is changed in two cases. Either it has reached the end of its service life or you need to increase the power. You may need to increase the power if, for example, you have bought a machine with a weak laser tube and you have orders for cutting thicker materials, or if you need to speed up the production process. If you want to replace the tube, which has already run out of power, do not rush and make sure that it has actually run out of power. How to carry out test operation independently. Firstly, make sure that the machine is perfectly adjusted. If the alignment is poor, the laser beam will lose its cutting ability and the tube may appear to be out of order. This also includes checking the geometry of the machine. All guideways must be level and strictly parallel to each other. Otherwise, the machine cannot be aligned. Watch the video on our channel to find out how to make the alignment. Next, check that the mirrors and lens are clean and in good condition, free of dirt, scratches, chips and translucence. These too may be the cause of reduced performance. If any of the above are present, clean the optical system, and if that does not help, replace the optical elements. The third step is to check the laser tube age. If the tube was purchased a long time ago, it may fail as time passes. Usually, the lifetime is specified by the manufacturer. When it has expired, the power is reduced and the machine stops cutting through the material. It is time to replace the laser tube. If there is nothing wrong with the lifetime and simple actions such as adjusting and cleaning the optics do not help, there may be a more complex cause. Make sure that the ignition unit is in good working order. Is it producing its rated current or is it under current? It might happen that one of the two transformers in the ignition unit burns out and the machine seems to work but the tube only delivers 50% of its power. In this case, the ignition unit must be replaced, not the laser tube. If you need help with test operation, contact Verma and we will send our engineers to you or carry out the tests and help you online. What do you need to change a laser tube? Now you have ascertained that a tube replacement is necessary. It does not matter if it has failed or if you simply want to increase the power of your machine. Before installing a new laser tube, there are five requirements to consider. First, the tube must fit into the machine. The power of the laser tube is directly related to its size. Tubes are usually between 0.8 and 1.8 meters long and have power of 40 to 200 watts. You can buy a more powerful tube, but what is the point of a powerful tube if you cannot fit it in your machine? Some CO2 laser machine manufacturers ignore this point, in which case it becomes difficult to install the tube. Watson machines have a special technical hole in the casing which allows the tubes to be larger and covered with a protective hood. Second, suitable tube mounts are required. The size of the laser tube increases according to its power. The more powerful the tube, the longer it is and the larger its diameter. It may therefore be a problem to replace the laser tube if it does not fit in the mounts. In such a case, the problem is solved by replacing the mounts to match the tube size. Watson laser machines feature universal tube mounts that not only fit any size of laser tube, but also allow for convenient adjustment of the tube position, both horizontally and vertically. Third, the ignition unit, aka high voltage unit, must match the capacity of the laser tube. At its best, the power of the laser tube should match the power of the machine's high voltage unit. The power of the ignition unit is adjustable, so the tube may have less power than the ignition unit, but not vice versa. For example, a machine with a 130 watt ignition unit can have a 60 watt laser tube. However, a machine with a 60 watt ignition unit must not be equipped with a 130 watt laser tube. There are several reasons for this. Firstly, the ignition unit may fail. Secondly, a weak ignition unit may not be able to use the tube at maximum power. Thirdly, if the voltage unit is weak, it may fail to ignite the laser tube and the laser beam will not form. Fourth, a powerful laser tube requires a powerful chiller. Ensure good cooling of the laser tube. For this purpose, we recommend installing a chiller on all laser tubes, irrespective of their power. Why? The answer is simple. The chiller allows you to keep the temperature in the range of 18 to 21 degrees, 
and has a closed circuit, i.e. no dirt or dust in the water, and therefore inside the laser emitter. Verma managers can help you to choose the right chiller for your specific laser tube, important for those engaged in engraving. The more powerful the laser tube, the larger the spot on the laser beam. Consequently, the worse the engraving quality is. To improve engraving quality and detail, use a short focus lens. Buying a laser tube from Verma, you get a nine-month warranty. If the tube fails during use, you can return or exchange it. Still have questions? Write in the comments or contact our managers. This is Verma. See you in the new videos.